The last thing that I want to take a look at as a part of this series is the balance of payments. The balance of payments accounts record a country's international trading, borrowing, and lending. The current account records receipts from exports sold abroad, payments for imports, net interest income paid, and net transfers. So it's equal to net exports plus net interest income plus net transfers. The capital and financial account records foreign investment in our domestic country minus our investment from our country abroad. The official settlements account records the change in our central bank's official reserves. Um, this is the government's holding of foreign currency. If official reserves increase, then the official settlements account is negative. And this is because increasing reserves is like investing abroad. When we increase reserves, we take our money, we put it on the foreign exchange market in order to purchase another country's foreign currency. So in a sense, it's like investment abroad. The sum of the balance of payments always equals zero. Items in accounts that provide foreign currency to us have a plus sign, and items that cost our currency, um, they have a minus sign in the balance of payments. The statistical discrepancy is in the capital and financial account. The capital and financial account balance plus the current account balance equals the change in official reserves. Net exports is essentially the export of goods minus the import of goods into our country. The government sector balance is the net taxes of a government minus that government expenditure on goods and services. If this is positive, then the surplus is lent to other sectors. If it's negative, then the government sector deficit equals the deficits of the, of the central bank, uh, the provincial and local governments. The private sector balance is equal to savings minus investment. If savings exceed investment, then the surplus is lent to other sectors. But if investment exceeds savings, then a private sector deficit is financed by borrowing from other sectors. A net borrower is a country that is borrowing more from the rest of the world than it is lending. A net lender is a country that is lending more to the rest of the world than it is borrowing. A debtor nation is a country that in its entire history has borrowed more from the rest of the world than it has actually lent. It has a stock of outstanding debt to the rest of the world that exceeds the stock of its own claims on the rest of the world. A creditor nation is a country that, during its entire history, has invested more in the rest of the world than other countries have invested in it. So it's lent out more money than it's borrowed in its entire history. An international borrower is, in essence, a country in which the demand for loanable funds is greater than the supply of loanable funds. And keeping in mind that we actually have a world supply of loanable funds in this market as well. The interest rate is held at the intersection between the domestic uh, demand for loanable funds and the intersection of the sub world supply of loanable funds. The quantity demanded is also at this intersection. But as you can see, at this real interest rate, the domestic supply of loanable funds is much less. And so the difference, as you can see, that's pointed out by the arrow, the orange arrow, is actually how much is borrowed by that country. An international lender is, in essence, a country at which um, the, the supply of loanable funds, the world supply of loanable funds, has its real interest rate. Um, it actually supplies more loanable funds domestically than is demanded. The quantity demanded of loanable funds at this real interest rate is actually less than the quantity supplied, and so it lends this excess, this surplus um, loanable funds to the rest of the world, and so it's called an international lender.